Welcome to Board Game Binge, the place where we bring you bite-sized, bingeable board game content from across the industry. I'm your host, Joe Slack, and joining me today is Chris Cormier. Chris is ridiculously passionate about board games. Having played over 1,200 different games, Chris enjoys all types of games, but gets most excited by lighter, medium-weight games, family-weight games, and has a special love for every kind of dexterity game. He prefers shorter games, enjoys games with great table presence or a gimmick, and doesn't mind some luck in his games. Chris is also a graphic designer and designs and sells t-shirts for board gamers, mugs and game room posters too, on his website, geekygoodies.com. And he's the co-host of two podcasts about board games, Escape into Board Games and Board Game Chaps. Besides thinking, talking, and playing board games, Chris also loves dogs, science fiction, books, and coffee. Chris, thanks so much for being here on the Board Game Binge. Hi, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's been... uh... It's exciting. I'm really excited to be on the show. I love talking to you. It's great. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've been on your podcast, so I thought it would be time to return the favor and we could talk a little bit about uh, you, how you got into board games and everything. So maybe we can start by telling our viewers and listeners your story of how you first got into board gaming. Yeah. Well, I was a board gamer uh, as a, a very young kid, as far back as I can remember. We were always playing card games and board games and I definitely had the the biggest, you know, six, seven year old board game collection when I was six or seven years old. And uh, I remember playing board games on the porch with the neighborhood kids um, for hours at times in the summer. Um, But I kind of well, I guess from there I went into role playing games. We played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons in my teens and early 20s. And um you know, even my cousin went got into a little bit of uh, his own sort of homebrew game design that we played leagues of for years and years. That was fun. Um, and then uh, uh, I guess in 99, I could be wrong on the year, um, a friend of ours uh, told us about um, board games, basically modern board games. And um, they had mentioned we had a mutual love of the television show Battlestar Galactica and they'd mentioned the Battlestar Galactica board game and they were telling us all about that and it was like wow that sounds good we gotta try that and uh, they invited us over and it's been non-stop ever since (laughs) Um, yeah that was our our friends Les and Lori shout out to Les and Lori thank you guys we love you (laughs) (laughs) so you transitioned from playing you know a lot of the old classics I'm sure when you were young and card games and that type of thing to these modern board games so uh maybe you could talk a little bit about uh some of the other uh modern board games that you got into after you got introduced to Battlestar Galactica and then where where it evolved from there and uh, and and kind of what what you're playing now sure um well between my wife and I actually we have some dispute about what was our first modern board game i think it was Battlestar Galactica she thinks it was either ticket to ride or the downfall of pompeii um all three games, which we still love today, and we still play quite uh, a lot. I have to say, we don't play Battlestar nearly as much because it is a long game. Um, but Downfall of Pompeii is still on the shelf and still gets pulled out uh, a couple times a year, and it's such a great game. Um, I think I've played somewhere around 4,500 different plays of games uh, with about 1200 uh, different games. Um, I like a lot, like you can't, I can't pick one that I love, you know? Um, I, I think some of my favorites, I guess, let, let's start with some of my favorites. I love Viticulture. Uh, I, I love the uh, different seasons of that game. Uh, I love worker placement games. That's probably up there amongst my favorites for years. One of my favorite games was Alumbra. Uh, I have the big box collection, so it's got like all of these expansions and tons of things that you can add to it. So I love that game. We played that to to death. Um, Carcassonne still stays uh, in our collection and gets played quite a bit. Um, An interesting story is when my... uh, So before my sister had her kids, we would get together two, three times a, uh, a week and we would play board games and I would be showing them all these new games and then they would go out and buy some and that kind of thing. And then the kids were born. The first, my first niece, uh, Charlotte was born and it, 
became harder to play games because she, you know, the mom and dad were always leaving the table and the baby and he had some needs and stuff. So we ended up playing Carcassonne. And I think, you know, at, this is before I was tracking my plays, but I think we probably played that game 200 times um, in the first couple of years. And it was basically past the baby. It was like, okay, it's my turn here. You take Charlotte and then I'll play my turn and I'll take Charlotte back. And, she just got passed around like she was one of the tokens at the at the table. First player marker. Yeah, she was the first player marker. And it was great because you could play with her, you know, and, and talk to her and, and entertain her. And then when it was your turn, it was like, oh, okay, this is where the board state is at now. And these this is the tile that I've got. And, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. And then back to the baby. <laughs> so we played that a lot. Um uh i kind of like some of the old school games i guess i like uh i like raw um himalaya is one of my favorite games um wingspan wingspan is a wonderful new game one of my favorites we play it quite a bit i love the azul games the century games um i always say that i like the sort of lighter mid-weight to light you know family friendly even almost kids games in some cases for me and sherry my wife uh she likes the deeper uh, more cutthroat um, competitive games that you know with more complex strategy and that kind of thing must be hard sometimes to decide on what to play then uh, when you have some conflicting <laughs> views of what you should be uh, putting on the table <laughs> very very true it's uh, thankfully she's she's a very patient woman who, uh, with me with my collection and uh, very agreeable with what we can play I'm pretty lucky that way that's awesome and Carcassonne is just a great game for exactly what you described because the the game state will change uh, between turns so you know you can plan a little bit ahead but not too much because things are going to change and then all you have to do is just place that one tile so turns are pretty quick so yeah that's a pretty pretty good game to uh to do with uh pass the baby with it seems yeah and we play with uh the we've played for years with the tom vassal uh variant which is popular online that's where instead of you draw a tile and play it you have three tiles always mm -hmm. at your time so you've got a little bit more strategic options of what you can do and you can think a little bit more but um you know it doesn't change the gameplay that much it's a, it's a good variant yeah, highly recommend just gives you uh, more options, which uh, as a as a player of games, you want to have some options. You want to have some interesting choices when you're when you're making that, not be too too forced or too restricted. Exactly. Yeah. Now you run a company as well that's called Geeky Goodies. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about what Geeky Goodies is and and how it got started? Uh, sure. Well, uh, we are coming up on our tenth anniversary. Um, I. I'm a graphic designer. I've been helping uh, small businesses and nonprofit agencies and community groups, uh, medium-sized businesses, sort of communicate their message to, um, you know, design logos, brochures, signages, conference materials, um, it, it pretty much everything, letterhead, business cards, everything that you would need to start a business or run a business. And I've been doing that for probably 25 or more years, 30 years. I don't know. Um, and uh, about 10 years ago, I decided to start Geeky Goodies because I wanted something that would combine my passion with board games with what I do for a living, the graphic design part of it. And um, so t-shirts seem like a pretty reasonable and in a normal expectation so that's where we went we uh i started geeky goodies it was a bit of a part passion project uh sort of part-time um learned a little bit about some of the print on demand companies throughout the years and um you know i don't i don't know how long ago seven eight years ago seven years ago probably i i basically started doing it full-time i still do the graphic design although my wife has taken on most of that um, but I will come in and help her out or I, if there's logos to design or something like that, I will uh, step in there. But Geeky Goodies is full time. Uh, we sell, boy, we sell a lot now these days. Uh, T-shirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, uh, hoodies. We sell game room posters, uh, coffee mugs, uh, mouse pads, game room clocks, uh, shower curtains, <laughs> tote bags, uh, throw pillows. There's there's a lot uh, that we do, um, and uh, I'm I'm always trying to find new products that we can add in, um, you know, throughout the year. 
Yeah, just about anything you can throw um, a logo and some words on, it sounds like you're getting involved in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so it's it's mostly board game related uh, materials, um, obviously, because that's what my passion is. But I actually have a lot of passions. Like I like science fiction. I like reggae music. I like uh, I like I read a lot. I read every night. Um, I uh, like movies and television. Um, so uh, I bring in some of that to uh, geeky goodies as well. So we sell, you know, board game shirts uh, and designs and we have some just, I guess you would call them under, you know, funny or, or geeky related uh, fan based related shirts uh, as well. Geekygoodies.com. I should give myself a plug if that's all right. <laughs> uh, if you want to find out more geekygoodies.com and I'm uh, all over social media on Facebook and Twitter and uh Twitter less so, Instagram, um, even Mastodon lately, which has been kind of a fun new one. Uh, TikTok, uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media. Interesting. And I know my wife and I both have uh, a, a number of shirts uh, from you, uh, some of our, our favorites there as well. Yes, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, anytime. Uh, I love your designs. And, um, you know, just looking at the the background there, and I, I've seen this on a shirt as well, the, uh, the meeples, uh, where you've combined, you know, uh, music, for example, yep. uh, with with gaming, uh, and you know, you've uh, I've definitely seen that in some of your other things that you've combined different things as well. So I was kind of interested. Uh, do you recall what the first shirt was that you created, or or what some of the first ones were that you created for Geeky Goodies? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I would say at least a half dozen didn't exist or sell or don't exist anymore and they didn't sell and they weren't very good designs or good ideas i think the first you know and i can't even remember which one came first but the first one was the meeples so uh that's uh, sort of a take on the beatles uh abbey road um design which you can see in the background and the other one that's not there is uh, board game mechanics. So it lists a whole bunch of board game mechanics. Uh, up here in this corner is a shirt that says, uh, if I seem distracted, it's because I'm thinking about board games. Um, that Those three were sort of the, the three that, you know, sold the best from the beginning and really sort of made me realize, yeah, this is something I can do full time and and I enjoy it and people seem to like it. And, and uh, you know, it's been a success. Um, yeah, but lots that didn't work out, you know, and that's part of it, right? Is you try lots of things and, you know, with print on demand, that's the the joy is I can, I can really experiment and play and, and, you know, have fun, be creative. And if no one likes it, but me, um, that's fine. I haven't, you know, printed 300 of them and you know have to deal with stock and all that kind of thing we're a print on demand shirt so if you place an order you know an order comes in from uh, joe and his wife lisa and they've ordered a bunch of shirts i print them for you and ship them out and it takes uh probably about seven seven to ten days depending where you are in the world we ship worldwide uh, we have a flat shipping rate unfortunately shipping continues to go up and up and up in price um but, you know, if you buy multiple shirts, then it, it goes down per shirt, obviously. If you're buying just one, it's a problem, right? I mean, uh, since COVID and uh, worldwide shortages and shipping and all that stuff, uh, shipping prices have gone up. And, uh, you know, not just us, all, all businesses have struggled to figure out ways to deal with that and, you know, try not to pass too much of it on to our customers. But yeah, that's that's definitely been an issue. Been an issue. We've seen that in the, the board game world. Shipping prices yeah. have gone up for freight shipping. Containers have gone up, you know, five to seven times and have come back down. Luckily, not completely, but come back down. And then individual shipping. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people are spoiled by Amazon's free shipping, uh, which isn't yes. really free. You know, they're they're you know taking you know some of the cut there, but they have such a large volume that they get such huge discounts. It's not like small businesses like ours that are shipping out, you know, things here and there. They're shipping out, you know, thousands of things every single day from all sorts of different locations. So they're getting, you know, these amazing rates, but, um, you know, it's it's made us spoiled for for free shipping. Uh, so we have to realize that, you know, th there are costs to send yes. things around and it's expensive. 
That's very true. Actually, I should point that out. Um, you know, uh, Geeky Goodies, we sell on my website, geekygoodies.com. We also sell on Etsy. So if you're familiar with Etsy, um, uh, you know, that's sort of um, local, small uh, creators put things up for sale on there. And uh, you can also buy our stuff on Amazon. You can find uh, links to the Etsy store and shop on Amazon uh, on our website. Um, so if you're buying things for that free shipping, you can add in a geeky goodies t-shirt. Not everything is available on all platforms, but you know, we're, we're trying to get them all there. Very true. Yeah. I know uh, one of my favorite shirts from you is uh, the board game addict shirt. And I, uh, I, I, I probably display that on, uh, on my website. So if anybody out there uh, see me in that, that's, you'll just know that's from Chris. <laughs> He's created that one. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. I appreciate all your support over the years. It's been been wonderful. Yeah, well, I just love what you're doing. It, and I wanted to ask you, you know, when you came up with this idea as well and wanted to combine your passion and your skills, did you also see that there was a bit of a, a gap, uh, that there was something like a, a need to be filled, like there wasn't a lot <laughs> of like gear uh, for, for for you know, geeks and board game uh, fans and that type of thing? And is that part of why you got started as well? Yeah. Um, Yes and no. I mean, it mostly started just out of a passion and, you know, I thought it would be something I would, you know, do mostly for my friends, to be honest, that's where I <laughs> thought it would go. Um, and, you know, there was always the hope that, you know, maybe I'll sell a few a year and somebody else might like them. But um, yeah, there was, when I started, there was definitely a, a hole in the market for, um, you know, people doing similar things. There was one or maybe two other companies that were doing similar kind of designs and shirts and um, they pretty much faded pretty quickly. Nowadays though, it's, it, they're everywhere. <laughs> there are, you know, retailers that sell uh, all kinds of designs and t-shirts related for uh, board gamers and, and specifically. Um, and uh, I guess somewhere near the beginning of our journey, we um, started working with, um, YouTubers, um, board game reviewers, uh, pub small publishers, that kind of thing, who either didn't have the means or the desire uh, to spend the time themselves to produce shirts and sell them on their behalf. So we would have them on our site, we'd sell them on our behalf, on their behalf, and we would split the profits with them 50-50. Um, so we did that for a, quite a few years. I think now it's become a little bit easier for people to do their own kind of print on demand campaigns and stuff like that. Um, but we still get, you know, requests from people. Do you, you know, sell t-shirts on your site? And um, we still have a number of partners. Uh, these days, though, I like to work with uh, local artists more. I prefer people who are a little smaller and um, either in the board game industry or are curious about it and want to, you know, look at a different market for where they can promote their art and that kind of thing. Um, an example of that one is I just uh, put up a, a new shirt Uh trying to remember the name i i will have the point salad uh is a shirt that was designed by a local artist um in ontario here and um yeah so we we split the profits with her um i i've always loved her art and it was great to work with her and and uh you know maybe it'll turn into something um i have to ask is that katya no Oh, no, I, I don't know Katya. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know Katya. No, it's, uh, her name is Cindy Damon. She lives okay. in Toronto. And um, yeah, she's she's a, a good little artist. Oh, that sounds terrible. She's a good artist. And um, she does fantastic stuff. I've always loved her work and have great admiration for her. And uh, yeah, so that's sort of where we're leaning towards. We used to sell t-shirts for like the dice tower and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but they're doing their own now and that's totally fine. We had a, a you know, an amicable and understandable split that way. Um, but we still sell shirts for, you know, Scott Nicholson um, for, um, uh, I'm having, I'm drawing a blank, but a number of different partners that you can find on our site. Uh, we sell lanterns, the harvest festival t-shirt. Mm -hmm. We sell um, a couple of different small publishers. Um, I don't do it as much because 
I found that it was more work than I want. It, it felt more like work and less like fun. And I want to focus more on my own designs and that kind of thing. So I'm really picking and choosing who I work with and, you know, the projects that I do with other people. That's a great thing about running your own business. You can you can pick and choose yeah. which which projects you want to take on, what designs uh, you're really interested in and in, in designing, and uh, and go from there. And we you know we evolve as individuals, and and you know so does each of our businesses, right? I mean, you're like, oh, I think you know that wasn't as much fun as I thought I was going to do, so I'm going to do something else. Yeah. Exactly. We can move on, and and with a print on demand kind of service like you have, like you said, a design's not working, or you're not really interested in it you can move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to know, uh, you know, of all the people that worked with, do you have any really interesting stories of um, somebody that you've worked with or a really like amazing project that you, you know, just couldn't believe you, you landed? I guess I have two. I, uh, I still very much love. So uh, Chaz, Chaz Marler from Paradise Paradise. He um, did a Kickstarter for his video uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we did, did the fulfillment for all of his backers. Um, so we printed, I don't know what it was, a hundred shirts or something like that. And we uh, shipped them out for him on his behalf and that kind of thing. And that was fun. Um, but what I loved about it the most, I mean, obviously I love Chaz. Chaz is a fun guy to work with, but um, the design is fantastic. There was two different shirts and just said paradise, paradise. One was like this sort of cloudy angel with, you know, dice with wings. And the other one was uh, this sort of, you know, tough guy, uh, you know, flames and dice with the devils and that kind of thing. And it would, they were just amazing shirts. So I love those. And I guess the other one was uh, when I met Tom Vassell, um, uh, so besides designing t-shirts, I, I take on a lot of different crafts. I've done, um, you know, board game re-themes. I've done uh, player mats and that kind of things. And one of the projects that I had done was uh, a set of coasters um, with like Carcassonne tiles on them and that kind of thing. And uh, I posted about it online. I have a, a Facebook group for, you know, board game re-themes and creative projects, that kind of thing. And I posted about it online and the two game designers, uh, Sen Fung Lim and Jay Cormier, Jay Cormier, no, no relation. We have the same last name, but <laughs> we're not related. Um, they had seen it and they loved it. And they said, can I take that? Can you make us a copy of that and take it with us to the Gathering of Friends? The Gathering of Friends is a uh, invite only exclusive uh, board game convention uh, south of the border that... Um, Alan Moon puts together and you're encouraged to bring prizes, I guess, for the prize table or something. I've never been, but uh, so they brought th these coasters. Uh, so I did some Carcassonne coasters for them. And then I did some for their own game room of their own game tiles and that kind of thing. And they took the Carcassonne coasters and they put them on the prize table. Well, it turns out Tom Vassell had picked them up at the gathering of friends as his prize. And I never met Tom, but I would always watch his channel. And sure enough, one day on his table, I see the Carcassonne dial. I was so excited. <laughs> and I I uh, talked to Sen, I think, and he had confirmed, you know, that they had used them and that Tom took them. And uh, that was very exciting for me. So then Tom was coming up another year for the Gathering of Friends, and they were taking a road trip to Toronto to go see a Blue Jays game and we're stopping at Snakes and, and uh, Lattes. And, uh, you know, he posted about it and Sherry and I just said, let's go. And uh, it was a chance to meet, you know, Tom, I, I gotta go. I gotta go meet this guy whose videos I've watched hundreds of them multiple times. Um, so we went down and Tom is surrounded by people and he's talking to people. And I, um, was standing in the group kind of waiting for a chance to say, Hey Tom, I'm a big fan, you know, love your, love your channel, love what you're doing, that kind of thing. And someone came up to me and said, you know, Oh, you're Chris, you're Chris Cormier. I have, you know, a, a fair size social media. I post a lot. People um, 
tend to sometimes recognize me or, or recognize my shirts or that kind of thing. And uh, someone had come up and said, you're Chris Cormier. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you. We talked for a little bit. And I gave them one of my cards with geeky goodies on it. And this weird thing happened. Like the whole group just went abuzz. And they're like, oh, can I have one of those? Can I have one of those? And I'm passing out all these cards. And um, Jason was there from the Dice Tower. And Daryl Andrews, I first time I'd met Daryl Andrews. And um a, a daniel roshi was there a board game designer uh and i'm passing out business cards and it was like it was is this really surreal experience of sort of being a you know a minor very 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 minor celebrity experience where people are going like hey i know you and i'm excited to see you you know kind of what i was sitting there waiting to do with tom <laughs> and and i guess tom sort of turned around and um was like what's this commotion beside me and he looked and i was like hi tom i'm a really big fan and i don't know what i said i probably you know was just like ah <laughs> hi tom big fan Big, 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 big fan and uh, made a fool of myself. And I gave him a business card. And um, Jason, uh, I guess, had known or or maybe I had told him in the, in, in the conversation. He mentions to Tom that I had just done the coasters that he has. And he, Tom was like, oh, and then all of a sudden you see the light go off in his eye. And he's like, oh, I know. I love those coasters. They're so great. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short. That's a very long story. So long story shorter. Um Tom and I started working together. So I started selling uh, Dice Tower t-shirts. Uh, we worked together for probably about, I want to say five years, uh, five or six years, maybe a little bit more. We did all kinds of different things for them, uh, different designs. And um, Tom and Z and Sam and Jason, um, not so much the new guys. I, I don't think I really chatted too much with the new guys, but the, the original four, I guess you could say, the three plus Jason, all fantastic, wonderful guys. I got to work with them and talk to them and, you know, get to know them a teeny tiny bit. And it was, you know, it was, I call it, it was sort of like my Oprah moment. Like mm -hmm. I'm giving out business cards to everybody. They're all excited. Uh, you know, people who had, you know, been following me on social media were, you know, excited to me and Tom's there. And then we started working one day. I got a phone call out of the blue from Tom Vassell. My wife says, it's Tom Vassell on the phone. You know, it's like, he's, he's, you know, my hero. He's this <laughs> guy who I love. I've got this man crush on. And um, yeah. So that was my story. That was a great, great day. A great memory. That's a great day. That is a great story, especially how people were recognizing you and it almost kind of became about you for a moment. And then it's like, and then Tom's like, Hey, what's this other guy that's taking my attention? So <laughs> weird. Never had anything <laughs> like that happen before. It was very, very strange. Um, and you know, all the people who were there were there because they'd seen Tom's post and we're all there to kind of, you know, Hey Tom, shake your hand. I'm a big fan. <laughs> and and that's, you know, what I was there for too. It was very, very strange and and very exciting. And Mm -hmm. yeah great absolutely and you you mentioned that you're very active on social media which i know you are and uh one of the things you do is you know advocate for board gaming and uh you have the hashtag what did you play mondays as well yes. so uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit of uh, what what that is what is uh, what did you play mondays and how did that start okay so hash uh hashtag what did you play mondays started i think about seven years ago now um and um I, I've always um, suffered from social anxiety. I'm not somebody who's good in, in really large groups. And uh, when the internet first started, this is me showing my age now, I have always used uh, online you know, websites and, and internet and then social media as a way to sort of put myself out there into the world and to feel slightly more comfortable about talking about myself and sharing things about myself. Um, and, um, so I was always looking for ways to engage people on, uh, social media. So I started, what did you play Mondays as a way to talk about something that felt safe for me, which was board games, something I know a lot about. I play a lot of, um, and, uh, to encourage people to share, uh, my love of board games and encourage people to talk about, the board games that they're playing on social media. Uh, at the time, social media was really a lot of um, 
you know, pictures of your dinner and your dog and your cat and that kind of thing. And there wasn't a lot of board game chatter. There wasn't a lot of, there was a couple of Facebook groups and that kind of thing. And I, I wanted, what did you play Mondays to become a place where, you know, people went to their own social media feeds and posted about, you know, I played this game. It's a great game or it plays in 40 minutes and it plays two to four players, or I just bought this game and I played it yesterday or last week and it was good. Um, the idea is that you pl- you post about the games that you played in the previous week and it happens every Monday and you post it on social media, whatever social media platform you use. I started promoting it. It really took off and it kind of changed, I guess, into something slightly different than what I had hoped it would be. It's sort of become a place, you know, like I'll post it on, uh, I post it all over social media, but I'll post it on like Facebook groups and that kind of thing. And people will, will reply with what games they played, which isn't really what I was hoping it would become. <laughs> I was hoping, you know, like you, Joe, would take the games that you played in the previous week and put them on your own you know, your own homepage, your own feed so that your friends who aren't board gamers could see them and then maybe talk to you and say, Mm -hmm. Hey, that game is really interesting. You have a game about cooking. I love cooking. Can I play that game with Mm -hmm. you sometime? Um, And some people do that, uh, but uh, it's, it's morphed into its own thing and that's fine. And I like it. And now there's tons of hashtags you know, similar to related to board games. And, and there's, I think there's three or four for every day of the week, if you want to really get involved and challenges and that kind of thing. And I can't keep up with it all. So I still do. What did you play Mondays? I've been doing it every week for, like I said, for, for uh, seven years or so. I forgot once uh, and uh, got a message at like 11 o'clock in the morning. It was like, Hey, where's, what did you play Mondays? I want to share what games I played. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot, but I've done it every week since then. And, and, you know, I ended up doing it that one just late. Uh, well, that shows that people morning. are paying attention to it, right? Yeah, when they, when they yeah. Miss it. It's like, where, where's my thing that I do every Monday? <laughs> yeah. I'm always shocked. Like I, like, you know, I, I, I hope this doesn't sound like I am, I'm on social media and, you know, people recognize me and I'm always shocked that people read what I post at all. <laughs> I'm always like somebody will, you know, say, Oh, I noticed you didn't pu- pub- publish your board game calendar this month. It's the second I always use it. And I'm like, Oh yeah. You actually, people actually use that and like that. Okay. I, I got to remember to do that kind of thing and, and I'll get on it right away. Or they'll say, I, you know, I saw that, you know, your sister had another baby. Congratulations on your nephew. And I'm like, you're paying attention to me. <laughs> it's very, very strange, but I guess that's the magic of the internet and the magic of social media, right? Is, is you have this reach, you know, and I kind of just think I'm posting to my friends and family and, and, you know, that group has kind of grown to the board game community as a whole. And it's, it's always surprising that people pay attention, but they do. And I love it and I appreciate it. Um, but I, I do get kind of, uh, shy about it <laughs> sometimes i i don't I, I don't think when someone i'm when i'm outside at a game convention or somebody says oh you're chris cormier i saw you posted about this or something i i don't know if i react well so i should probably apologize anyone listening to this who's come up to me in the past and i just said oh yeah uh-huh it's not anything to do with you it's just because i'm awkward <laughs> okay so not used to um, that kind of attention <laughs> yeah not used to that kind of attention i i uh it doesn't happen often but when it does i get thrown for a loop well especially because you're doing everything online and then you see somebody in real life <laughs> which is a different situation right yeah and and it feels sort of i don't know it feels personal right they're they're my board game t-shirt designs it's you know pictures that i've taken of board games and i posted about you know tell us what you played and i try to reply to you know some of the messages it's it's grown so much i can't reply anymore to all of them uh but appreciate everyone who does participate in what did you play mondays uh i also do uh, a free board game calendar every month uh that you can download on my website um, and again, that's a picture that I've taken of a board game that we've played. Um, and uh, it comes in two different formats, one that you can put on your desktop uh, that shows the days of the month and another one that you can print off and, 
you know, there's one every month and that's been going on for several years too. And it's the same kind of thing. It's like, wow, somebody uses this and they need it and they want, you know, I'm two days late and posting it and they're like, come on, dude, get it together. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <In the band. laughs> yeah, yeah, you you actually use it. Thank you. I, I will get on this right away. So anyway. Awesome. Well, uh, Chris, I know you've already mentioned it, but maybe you can mention maybe one last time, uh, where can people find your stuff and get some of their own geeky goodies? Well, the easiest place is probably geekygoodies.com, G-E-E-K-Y-G-O-O-D-I-E-S.com. That's my website. Uh, I sell um, t-shirts and everything there for board gamers. Uh, there's also links to the different places you can find me on social media. There's the free board game calendar. There's a little information about uh, what did you play Mondays and some of the other things I'm doing. There's links to the podcasts that I co-host. Um, and um, yeah, I'm I'm all over social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok the most these days. Uh, Twitter has kind of died for me. I'm not sure it's something I still want to participate in, but I still have an account and I still out of habit, I guess, post to there. Um, uh, Mastodon is the, one of the new ones that I'm using and trying out. Um, yeah, Plurk, uh, Hive. There's, I'm I'm trying a bunch of them. The only one I'm not really on is uh, I shouldn't say this. Twitch, Twitch, <laughs> <laughs> Twitch. Yeah, I don't know. That wasn't for me. But uh, yeah, so you can find me all over social media. I'm posting my different things on there. Very cool. Well, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you as always. So thank you so much for being part of the Board Game Binge. Thank you so much, Joe. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. This has been an episode of the Board Game Binge Podcast. Guest hosted by Joe Slack. Produced by James Staley and Mike Bruner. With original music by Nick Smith. If you'd like to watch these interviews live, simply subscribe to our Instagram channel, Board Game Binge Podcast. And you'll get notifications of the live interviews, giveaways, and interesting board game content from across the industry. We can't wait for you to join us. See you next time.